Hi everyone, it's Ollie from Corker. Today we're in our show area. Um, we're giving you a little update of what we're doing this year. Um, so we've got a really nice bar going over at the end um, for next year for our events. We've got a cooking station and a chill out zone. Today we're laying some Dutch clay pavers with Jack from Garden Creations. We're laying the clay pavers around our middle section here in different colours. So we've got about six different colours. Yeah, so Jack's here today, he's doing some really nice how-to videos, some top tips on how to lay clay pavers. We'll be putting this up on YouTube and our Instagram, so give us a follow, give Jack a follow at Garden, Your Garden Creations. Um, and yeah, so Jack will be here all day, giving you some great insights on how to lay clay pavers. Hi, my name's Jack from Garden Creations. Uh, I'm here at Corkers today in their show gardens to do a um, how-to video and a demonstration on how to lay clay pavers. Uh, the tools you'll need are a rake, tape measure, angle grinder, spirit level. We have a um, whacker plate here and a tamper here as well for any hard to reach places. Right, so here we have um, a sub base. We've, we've uh, already prepared this. What we've done is we've excavated the ground um, 215 millimetres below the finished ground level that we have here. That's to allow for 65 millimetres for the pavers, 50 millimetres for the sand, uh, and 100 millimetres of a type 1 sub base. If it's just for pedestrian traffic, 100 millimetres is, is sufficient. If you're going to be um, having cars going on it or, or, um, or other vehicles, you're going to want at least 150 millimetres. Um, it also depends on the ground below. You're going to want to uh, excavate until you find something hard like clay. You don't want to be laying on topsoil. Um, so with this type 1 sub base, what we've done is we've uh, laid it out in, uh, in a couple of uh, layers and compacted each layer until we get a nice solid base to work from. Um, you're also going to want some edge restraints. Here we've got this pre-existing patio. Uh, it may be the side of your house or you may not have any edge, edge restraints in which case you're going to have to build some yourself. Um, if you're going to have to build them you can, you can use the pavers concreted in place um, with a haunched edge or concrete or a mortar sorry on one side. Um, or you can use other things, you can, they, you can get uh, concrete edge restraints, um, you can use sleepers, anything that's going to give you a solid edge to work to basically. So we've already prepared this area with sharp sand, uh, we've got it to a depth of uh, about 40, 40 to 50 millimetres. You really want to aim for between 30 to 50 millimetres of sharp sand uh, pre-compaction. Um, you then want to level it all off, uh, you can use a spirit level and just scrape it back or, or even just a plank of wood. And just scrape it to get a nice level surface. We're lucky enough here that we've got this lovely big area of paving. So we've made up a jig and jigs are always very useful if you're able to if you're able to use one and we can just scrape down and we've got a nice level to work from. This hasn't yet been compacted but that's the next step. With the sharp sands, there's a very handy calculator on the Corkers website, which will help you work out exactly how much you need for your project. Another good thing to um, check when you're putting in the edge restraints is just check the distance uh, between your edge restraints and see whether your bricks will fit in, your pavers will fit in without being cut down. It's always better if you've not got any cuts to make. With these rustic brick pavers, uh, they have a rough edge um, then are a natural product, so there is a bit of variance between the sizes. Right, so now we're going to compact the sand um, down to, uh, to a level to lay the pavers on. Uh, it's important to make sure that the sand is a, quite moist before you start. This way you can get a good compaction to it. Another thing to note is once the sand is compacted, you want it to be two or three millimetres higher than the finished level, than your edge restraints here. Right, so I'm going to start compacting. So here we have the clay pavers that we're going to be using today. Um, you can buy them by the pallet load like this, or you can buy them uh, in smaller amounts if necessary. Uh, it's always recommended to start taking the pavers from the corner and work down through the piles, rather than taking them down layer by layer. Um, this is just because there can be variation between the layers uh, as they're a natural product.
Right, with these particular pavers, um, you have 100 pavers per square metre. Um, if you're not sure, depending on the pavers you're using, you can always speak to the guys here at Corkers or get someone like myself to um, work it out for you. Um, right, we're going to start laying the pavers now. You've got to decide on your pattern before laying. The pattern we're going for here is a linear pattern down the edges. They're going to be side to side and then a linear staggered pattern down the middle. Other laying patterns that you can use, you can, you can go over like a herringbone design, which is something like this. It's a bit more intricate and takes a bit, bit more work to install, but it does look great when it's finished. All right, as I've said, uh, they are a natural product and therefore there is a bit of variance in the size. You can, you can see a little bit between these two pavers. There's um, just a couple of millimetres difference in length. Because of this, when you're laying the pavers, you want to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room between the pavers, one or two millimetres, which just gets filled with sand and locked together at the end. Although they, there are differences in sizes, it really does add to the rustic style of the bricks. Okay, so we've just put this string line in here, just to check that the pavers are all in nice and straight. And then we can line our next line of pavers up to this string line. The pattern that we're, gonna, that we're going for here, as I said earlier, is pavers going this way to start with, 90 degrees to the edge. And then in the middle, they're gonna be in a linear pattern, like so, with staggered joints between them. We wanna make sure that these staggered joints um, are lined up so that the middle of the paver is right on the join. Because of the way these pavers are made, um, using the natural clay, um, during the production process you get the odd one with, with a little bit of a curve in it. Um, it's important to just continue, lay these bricks as normal, um, it's, it's part of the, uh, the style of, of um, pavers. Because of this though, you're going to want to keep moving your string line along to ensure that you keep your path running nice and straight. Right, so I've finished laying these pavers now. We're going to put the edge, the final edge pavers in. If you've made your, done your measurements right, they should just slot in. Um, you might get the odd one, which just needs a little tap with your rubber mallet, um, just because of the variance in size. So I'm going to put these in, and then we're going to brush the kiln dried sand in and get it all locked together. Right, now we've finished laying these pavers, we're going to be brushing in the uh, kiln dried sand that we've got here. Uh, normally you'd probably lay a, a larger area before brushing in the kiln dried sand. Um, you must have got to ensure it's a, a nice dry day um, just to, to stop the stand, sand all sticking to the pavers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush in as much as I can, go over it with the whacker plate with a, a rubber sole on the bottom to prevent any cracking. This will just knock the pavers down a couple of millimetres, which is why we left them high uh, before when we started. Um, right, I'm going to get, get cracking. So I've just finished up uh, this section here. Um, you may find you just want to brush in a bit more killed dried sand as it settles um, if, when it gets rained on. Um, all the products that we've used here today have come from Corker. You can find them on corker.co.uk. Uh, you can find myself uh, on Instagram at Your Garden Creations or at yourgardencreations.com. Gardens here at Corkers are constantly being updated, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. I'm now going to finish off this part. <laughs>